love is impossible. With love, we have you have to respond correctly, no matter what is done to you. You have to be patient. You have to be kind. It's just impossible. And without God's love, it will always remain impossible. Because love is not about us. It's about con being continually interested in the other person's well-being. We've all had that family member, that friend that we that we genuinely try to love all the time, but every once in a while we slip up and we just have such hateful hateful attitudes towards them. And let's not even get started on, on our enemies and how we feel about them. We need to learn and experience what the Bible teaches about love. And we can truly love with God's progressive love. And the three steps of God's progressive love are first off His outpouring to us. And secondly, as we accept that, we are enabled to love Him back. And thirdly, as, as God, and, God and us have that fellowship of love, we, are, we, are, we reflect that love to those around us. So first off, God, God's, love is, God's progressive love is poured out onto us. In fact, according to the Bible, God says that He loves all of us. He, he loves 100% of mankind. Um, in Psalm 139, God, God knows us fully. Psalm 139 says that He knows our inner, our inner thoughts and our, and our actions, everything about us, He knows. First Samuel further clarifies that God sees our hearts. Valverde and Zuck uh, of the Dallas Theological Seminary say in their Bible Knowledge Commentary published in 1983 that God not only knows that man is evil. He died. He sent Christ to die for us specifically because of and we were evil, specifically for the evil people. Um, and also, God loved us first. Romans five eight says that while we were still in our sin, Christ died for us. And furthermore, John fifteen thirteen says that this is the greatest form of love. It reaches us wherever we are. George Guthrie even writes in his NIV application commentary of Hebrews, uh, pu published in 1998, um, that because of God's love, He forgives us completely. Think about that. He forgives us completely. But it's not simply enough to acknowledge and know that God loves us. In turn, we have to accept that. And we have to, and then we become enabled to love God back fully. And because of that, because of that enabling, we can truly become dedicated to God. Um, in fact, we can do what Galatians says: walk by the Spirit. We can, we can, we can rest assured that God's strength will be made greater, even though we are weak, as Saint Corinthians says. Um, that sin becomes expelled from us. And we can have true fellowship with God. And as John 4.23 says, we can worship in, in spirit and in truth. We can be transformed. We can truly have fellowship with God. Uh, Craig Keener writes in his Bi IVP Bible Background Commentary of the New Testament, uh, published in 19, um, 1993, that, um, that this is a continual experience. So having accepted and returned God's love, our actions and our attitudes need to be impacted, which brings us to our third step, um, that God's progressive love always ends with a reflection to those around us. And in fact, this is the very indicator that the first two steps have actually happened. First John 4.20 says, uh, uh, in the ESV, uh, in, which is the English Standard Version, that if anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. God's love is like a river uh, flowing in a, rock, in a riverbed. The water, the water cannot choose which of the stones in the bottom of the riverbed to, to hit and which not to. It encompasses all of the stones. In the same way, with God's love, we can't pick and choose who to love and what not to love. But God's love is all-inclusive all, all and it's progressive. It covers all the stones in our lives. And so now, we live contrary to our nature. As John 13.35 says, we are, now are known by our love. As First Peter 3.9 says, 
regardless of what other people do to us, now we respond correctly back to them. And God even commands us in John 13, 34, to love even as He did. So in conclusion, I have listed the three steps of God's progressive love. His initial outpouring unto us, our acceptance, which enables, which enables God to move that in us to where we can love Him back, and then that re the reflection of that unto those around us. It is, it is impossible to love the closest of friends without God's progressive love in our lives. And if we learn, truly learn, what the Bible teaches and experience that about love, I believe we can change this world. Re our relationships with, with our families, with our friends, with our deepest and with our worst enemies, the situations that we're in, everything will always improve with God's love present. Gary Collins, a licensed psychologist, writes in his book, Christian Counseling, which was reprinted in 2007, that um, love is a basic necessity of all of mankind. And if there is lacking love in a child's life, it causes developmental issues for them. Which makes me wonder, how can our world be different? How can our generation be different with God's love?